Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names and who recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company, like Rexall MI-31, for example, Rexall's popular and versatile mouthwash, gargle, and breath deodorant. Whole strength MI-31 kills contacted germs almost instantly, yet will not harm the delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Ask for Rexall MI-31 at Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you a transcribed half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. <laughs> Diamond Detective Agency, I'll help you out if you're in trouble, but if it's a murder, it'll cost you double. Rich. Oh, hello, Helen, baby. What's new with the wealthy? Not much. Only we had a date last night, remember? Well, did we have fun? Oh, no. Only we'd had more fun if you'd shown up. Now, Helen, don't overestimate me. I don't. No. Look, honey, I am sorry about last night. Sat up with a sick aunt, you know. Tender. Well, don't you believe me? No. Expect me to? No. Then we're even. Hmm. Oh, and I hate people who hold grudges. You busy tonight? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No, I'm doing what? Oh, I'll probably end up listening to some idiot play the piano. Hmm. Oh. Anyone I know? Maybe. He's a little boy who never grew out of the cops and robbers stage. Oh, yes. The good-looking one. He's the guy. Co- Uh-oh. Client just walked in. I'll call you back and squirm later. Bye. Diamond, in the rough. What can I do for you? You seen the morning papers? Only the funnies. Seen the story on page two? Now, what are you, a traveling quiz show? Look at it. Hmm. Pete Rocco broke out of prison. That's right. You sent Pete up for murder. He always said he'd get out and take care of you. Gee, I wish I hadn't cut my fingernails. I got nothing to chew. You better find something. Pete's a nasty little boy. Hmm. Well, what's all this to you? My name's Danny. Danny Rocco. I'm Pete's brother. Oh. Looking for a piece of cheese? I found one. Get your hat, Shamus. There was a bulge in Danny's coat pocket that hadn't come as a suit. Believing in the safety first slogan, I picked up my hat and was led to a car outside. We drove through town and then the Mulberry Street near Five Points to the section that used to be the heart of the city. We stopped in front of a cigar store. Okay, Diamond, get out. Oh, it's so comfortable here. Come on, move. Well, if you put it that way. Hmm, the Rocco Smoke Shop. Yeah, it's mine. Bet you sell opium. In the back, behind those curtains. That's far enough. Ma! Hey, Ma! I'm right here, Daniel. You know I don't like shouting. Standing in the doorway was a little gray-haired old lady with a sweet, tired smile on her face. If this was Pete Rocco, he wore quite a disguise. You just a diamond? I've given up a denying it. Sit down, please. Daniel, stop looking mean. Go outside and tend the shop. Oh. Daniel. Uh, okay, Ma. Well, now I've seen everything. Daniels is a good boy, Mr. Diamond, but one must be stern at times. Oh, yes, one must. You're probably wondering why I sent Daniels to bring you here. Well, I have thought about it between prayers. Mr. Diamond, I tried to raise my boys the best I could, 
Peter and Daniel had every chance for success, but Peter failed me. He killed a man. Go on. I trained my boys to be pickpockets. That was during their school days, of course. Oh, that's of course. They advised to take them to a nice, tidy little bookmaking business. Like any mother, I wanted to keep them away from violence. Oh, uh, very thoughtful. Mrs. Hammond, I've known crime and criminals all my life. My husband was an immigrant. A criminal killed in a gang war. The only life I could teach them, but Peter failed me. Peter turned to murder. Uh, Mrs. Rocco, this is very interesting, but why was I brought here? I'm getting to that. Please be patient. I'm sorry. You see, as long as my boys stuck to bookmaking, I was happy. I was proud of them. But when Peter killed that man, yeah, he failed me. Oh, uh, you said that before. Yes, so I did. Mr. Diamond, you're the one who sent Peter to prison. The police couldn't catch him, but you did. I want you to send my boy back where he belongs. Behind bars. I see. I'll pay your usual fee. If Peter's out long, he might kill another man. I couldn't stand that. I don't hold with violence, Mr. Diamond. <laughs> There was a sad look on her face as she pushed the buzzer beside her chair. She was a proud little thing, but you could see the hurt in her eyes when she spoke of Pete. She was determined to have him put back in prison. After all, she'd only raised him to be a pickpocket. Ah, oh, this modern generation. Absolutely no regard for their parents. You ring for me, Ma? Daniel, drive Mr. Diamond back to town. I'll watch the shop. Oh, dear. You haven't said that you would take the job, have you, Mr. Diamond? Ma would like for you to, Shamus. <coughs> well, I... Uh... Thank you so much. Daniel, you're looking mean again. Danny drove me downtown. Instead of going to my office, I went to the 5th Precinct, where I found Sergeant Otis laboring over a crossword puzzle. Poor Otis. He couldn't find a four-letter word for something that swims, even if he hit him in the face with a herring. Well, hello, brainchild. What? Oh, you. Clever as always, I see. Shamus, why don't you dig a hole and jump in it? And disturb your wormy relatives? Oh, perish the thought. Get lost. My, I'd be touchy today. Well, can't you see? I'm working a puzzle. See it? Yes. Believe it. <laughs> That's another matter. Have it worked on a genius. I'm going to see Walt. Oh. Good afternoon, Lieutenant Levinson. My, you look impressive with your feet on the desk. Saving shoe leather? Rick, where have you been? I called you 50 times this morning. Well, I've been chatting with a very pleasant little lady. Mm, blonde or brunette? Neither. Her hair was gray. Well, for you, that's a switch. But, boy, you better go in hiding for a while. Pete Rocco's out of prison. Yeah, so I heard. Is that why you called me? Right. Rocco said he'd get you, and he's not the type to kid. He'll be looking for you, Rick. Well, that's just Andy, Walt, because I'll be looking for him. What? I've got a client who wants Rocco back behind bars. Any idea where he is? Uh, not much to go on. He's here in town somewhere, that's for sure. Well, why do you say that? Well, remember that role he took from that bookie before he plugged him? Mm -hmm. More than 50,000 bucks. He never would tell where he hid it. Oh, yeah. You think he'll hang around long enough to dig it up and then go south, huh? That's how it looks to me. On the other hand, you might contact one of his old cronies here to get the dough and meet him somewhere else. Maybe. But Pete wouldn't trust many people with 50,000. Oh, it's, uh, there was a guy named Roscoe Ward used to pal around with Pete a lot. He's yeah. still around town? Yeah, I got a location on him this morning. Seems he's a bowling fanatic. Bowling? Yeah, hangs out in an alley around North Broadway. Joint called Atlas Alley. Mm, yeah, yeah, I know the place. Oh, well, I think I'll get a little exercise. Bowling, maybe? It beats snooker. See you around, Walt. <laughs> I drove up to the Atlas Alleys and parked in a lot across the street. The bowling fanatics were added hot and heavy, and I sat down in one of the spectator's seats. Half an hour later, a pale little punk came in, got an alley, and began bowling alone. I decided to join him, not because he looked lonely, but because his name happened to be Roscoe Ward. Well, uh, hello, Roscoe. Huh? Do I know you? Well, I have the ugliest friends in town. Maybe you'd like to be one of them. Uh, sorry, I, I'm antisocial. Mind if I bowl with him? Yeah. Thanks. I'll go first. Oh, I knocked.
knocked them all down. Now, what will you play with? Hey, hey, that's not bad. You got a swell approach. Thanks. What's your pitch anyway? What do you want from me? Well, I'd like to meet some of your friends, Roscoe. Like I said before, a man is social. So is your friend I want to meet. Just got back in town and won't let anyone see him. Oh, what? Hey, now I remember you. The name's Diamond. Good memory. Let's try it again. Know where Pete Rocco is? Oh, 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 so that's it, huh? But you better head to the Catskills. Word says that Petey's going to put a slug through your private eye. Yeah, so I heard. I thought I'd look him up and beg for mercy or something. Yeah, I bet. But sorry I can't help you. You'll look it. But if I should see Pete, I'll tell him you was looking for him. <laughs> yeah, he get a big kick out of that. Now beat it, late man. I got a bolt. Roscoe went back to his game and I left the alleys. The only thing I knew about Pete Rocco was that somewhere in this city of millions he was waiting to kill yours truly. Not a pleasant thought, but then I'm not in the very pleasant business. I crossed the street to the parking lot and went to my car. Hi, pal. I've been waiting for you. Wow, oh, Pete Rocco. Yeah, yeah. Get him. He looks thinner, Pete. Can I go across the street and get you a hot dog? No, thanks, pal. Right now I've got my heart set on a little ride. Now get in. Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, private detective, here's your Rexall family druggist. Last week, a customer told me that... Something I really like about Rexall Milk of Magnesia is that one bottle won't be so thick I can't even pour it, and the next one thin and watery. Somehow, Rexall Milk of Magnesia always seems to be just right. Well, ma'am, that's because every bottle of Rexall Milk of Magnesia has to meet an exacting standard of viscosity, or it won't wear the Rexall label. What do you mean by viscosity? Well, an easy definition would be the degree of thickness in a liquid. Now, Rexall scientists conduct scientifically precise tests on every batch of Rexall milk of magnesia to make sure it meets this constant standard of viscosity because that's one big reason why you'll always get a uniform dosage from every bottle. Oh, and I thought it was all just an accident. Oh, no, ma'am. There are no accidents behind the fact you can always depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. <laughs> And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. With a gun pointed at me and Pete Rocco at my side, I followed directions and drove to a Harlem address. Pete led me upstairs and into a half-furnished flat. Far enough. Now sit right here, bright boy. That's good. You know, pal, I've been waiting a long time for this. Well, you always were the patient type. What are you waiting for now, Pete? An audience? No, oh, I'm in no hurry. You just sit there and square it for a while. Who's there? It's me, Vasco. Well, hello, Snoopy. Can you beat this guy, Petey? He was looking for you. Let's not rub it in, boys. It's what you're waiting for, Petey. Take care of him. Let's beat it. Shut up. We don't leave till I get word it's all clear to pick up the money. Yeah, but when are you going to find out? Who's going to let you know? Don't get too nosy, Roscoe. Diamond, after you picked me up, I had a rough time. During that trial, I didn't know what they were going to throw at me. Life with a chair. Just had to wait. Well, that's what you're going to do. You're going to sit there and you're going to wait. When you're least suspecting it, I'm going to put three slugs through your head. My barber won't like this. Yeah, just keep making cracks, wise guy. You'll break before long. Yeah, you'll break before long. Is there an echo in here? Roscoe, did you shake that police tail? <laughs> yeah, he's still looking for me. And the bowling alley. Good. Tie Diamond up tight and keep an eye on him. I'm going out for a while. Ah, oh, Pete, you going to take a chance on getting sick. Shut up. Been away for five years. I'll do what I want. I'll tie him up. <laughs> Pete kept the gun on me while Roscoe tied my arms behind a chair. Then he put the gun he had taken from me in his left pocket and his own in his right. He resembled a walking armory as he went out the door. You know, Snoopy, 
Then that's a bad thing. Oh, now, watch it, Bosco. You'll hurt my feelings. He's Pete's a rough boy. I'm going to enjoy watching him settle with you. Oh, you have such simple taste. What's in this for you? Pete giving you a cut? Yeah, if he ever gets around to picking up the dough. He's got to wait until he gets the all clear signal out. Oh, so there's someone else in this. Who, Roscoe? I don't know. If I did, I wouldn't yap to you. No, it's too bad you'll be a corpse soon. Hmm? Oh, thanks for the pleasant thought. No, I mean it. That strike you made at the bowling alley tonight, that, that just wasn't luck. you got a swell approach. You think so? Yeah. That's where I have my trouble, with my approach. But when Pete gives me my cut at the door, I'm going to buy me an alley and bowl all the time. Oh, how exciting. Say, you want to give me a few pointers? What? The approach. Maybe you could help me improve mine, huh? Now, look, this floor is kind of slippery. Now, watch. Now, I always hold the ball like this. You see? I swing it back and approach like this. Ed, how'd it look to you? Well, I, uh, I couldn't see too well from here. Suppose you untie my hand. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to stay tied there. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I can't help you then. Uh, come around this side. I can't see through that table. Oh, all right. Yo, I got it. I got it. I'll slide towards you this time. All right. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I, uh, I won't hurt you now. No, go on. Be brutal. Well, it's, it's too sloppy, Roscoe. You keep your head up too high. The head, huh? Oh, yeah, sure. And keep the head down. That's right. Ward followed instructions and kept his head down low, just in line with my foot. Chalk up a strike for Diamond. He went down like the number 10 pen. I managed to work my hands up over the back of the chair... Then a few calisthenics and my hands were in front of me, still tied, but free enough to call Walt Levinson on the phone. Fifteen minutes later, he arrived, put the cuffs on the ward, and untied me. Hey, you're loose. You know, maybe I should have kept you tied up. You might stay out of trouble then. You're so considerate, Walt. I'll put some men around the house. When Pete comes back with... Uh-oh. Maybe him now. Otis, bring Roscoe Ward over here. Come on, Ward. Ward, you pick up that phone and act like nothing's happened. Hold the receiver so we can hear who's on the line. If you don't, I'll see that the judge throws the book at you. Uh, hello. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. Is this Pete? Of course, you don't want it. Wrong? Oh, no, 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 Pete. No, everything's fine. You're so funny. You're, uh, take the phone out and put the receiver in front of Diamond. Yeah, sure, sure, Pete. That's... I heard him. Give me that phone. Uh, hello, Pete. Take up to see if I'm comfortable? How long you been loose, pal? Come again? Diamond, I left you in a chair across the room. The phone don't reach that far. Well, Pete, you're getting smarter. Yeah, thanks. Too bad I'll have to postpone those three slugs in the head. But maybe later. I'm glad you said maybe, Pete. I have different ideas. Yeah, we'll see, pal. We'll see. Well, he tricked us, Walt. He won't be back here. Does this bird know where he is? Yeah, I don't think so. Costco, you mentioned that Pete had to wait for the word from someone before he could pick up that money. Who is that someone? I told you before, I don't know. Look, punk, you're all through. Help us out and you'll get a better deal in court. Yeah, well, if I knew, I'd tell you. All I know is that Pete won't go near the door until this someone gives him the green light. No. I think he's telling the truth, Walt. Take him downtown and book him. I'm going visiting. I drove back out Mulberry Street to the Rocco Cigar Store. I was hoping Pete's brother, Dan, might remember some of Pete's old hangouts. I wanted to wrap up this case quickly for two reasons. One, Pete was a killer, might kill again at any minute. And two, I might be the one he'd kill. Simon? Oh, yeah, hello, Danny. I'm trying to get you in your office. I think I know where Pete is. Hello, Mr. Zama. I'll tell you later. I do hope you have something to report. Well, uh, uh, not much, Mrs. Rocco. I met your son today on the wrong side of a gun. I don't know where he is now. Oh, well, that's too bad. But you will catch him, I'm sure of that. Peter must be punished. I don't hold with violence, Mr. Diamond. Uh, Ma, don't you want me to drive you over to visit Mrs. Montelli? Oh, well, that would be nice, Daniel. I'd like that. Well, uh, uh, you get your wrap and we'll go now. All right. And Mr. Diamond, remember... I want my son caught quickly before he can kill again. Good day. Now then, Danny, what were you saying about Pete? 
I know where you can locate him. I didn't want to talk in front of Ma. I want to get out of this. Go on. Pete called me a little while ago. He's coming over tonight. I'm taking Ma to visit a friend, so she'll be out of the way. Tonight's your chance, Diamond. Tonight. I made plans to meet Danny out in front of the shop around 8. Then I went back to my office. I called Helen, wrote my dinner date for that evening, and waited as the hours ticked by. 7.30 and I was ready to go. Pete had taken my gun earlier, so I slipped a spare in my pocket and drove to the cigar store. I parked down the street, walked halfway up the block and met Danny. Diamond? Yeah. Our boy showed up yet? No, but he should be here soon. Come on. We walked up to the shop and Danny unlocked the door. The shop was dark as I entered and I tripped over something on the floor. Hey, can we have some light in here? Sure. Why not? That's better. And then I saw what I tripped over. Pete Rocco with six bullet holes in his body. And then it was clear. Why had Pete come here? To get the money. That made the strong arm boy behind me to contact. The one Pete was waiting for to give him the all clear was little brother Danny. Right, Shamus? Yeah, I'll be honest. Yes, I am. Pretty smooth, huh? Here, catch. <coughs> yeah, that's good. You'll notice it's your gun. Pete was bragging about how he took it from you. He let me see it. And that was fatal. Right. And this gun I got on you now was Pete. I kill you, put the gun in Pete's hand, and I'm clear you shot each other. No one will blame me. You thought this all out, huh? That's right. Pete and I robbed that bookie together. He left the dope for me to keep after he was picked up. I figured he'd never get out, but when he did... Well, it's real convenient you're being around. Now say your prayers, Samus. This is it. Is he? Is he dead, Mr. Diamond? No, you, uh... You hit him in the shoulder. Better call an ambulance, though. Yes. My boys. Peter and Daniel, look at them. I tried to teach them. I told them I wouldn't stand for violence. But they wouldn't listen. You know, sometimes you've just got to be stern. Yes, Francis. Will you fix us some drinks, please? Soda with mine. And you, Mr. Diamond? Oh, I'll take soda, too, Francis. About a jigger full. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Rick. Uh-huh? Don't you ever get tired. Playing the piano? <laughs> Never. That's not what I meant. Why, like today, you were almost killed twice. Honey, you can only be killed once. All right, then. You were threatened twice. Don't you ever wish you were in a different profession? For instance? Oh, insurance, maybe. You can talk fast enough. Well, you uh, may have something there. Need a lot of gals in the insurance game. On second thought, he'd be better as a good humor man. Need a lot of children instead. Hmm, gals are like better. And so I've noticed. Oh, Helen, what's wrong with my own business? Now, where else could I find excitement all day and a beautiful girl to sing to at night? Hmm. Flattery will get you everywhere, Mr. Diamond. Don't I know it? A little bit independent in your walk. A little bit independent in your talk. There's nothing like you in Paris or New York. You're awfully easy on the eye. A little bit independent when we dance. A little bit independent towards romance. A bit of sophistication in your glance. And yet you're easy on the eye. Whenever I'm with you alone, you weave a magic spell. And though it be a danger zone, I only know that you're swell. A little bit independent with your smile. A little bit independent in your style. How can I help but love you all the while? 
when you're so easy on the eyes. Rick. Yes, baby? I've been wondering which holds more attraction for you. Me or my piano? Hmm? Oh, come here, baby. Here's your drink, Mr. Oh! Mr. Diamond. <clears throat> Miss Helen. Oh, dear. Why did I ever leave Cambridge? <laughs> Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Whenever you have a headache, remember this about Rexall aspirin. When taken with water, the five full grains of pure aspirin in every Rexall tablet are ready to go to work for you even before they reach your stomach. So whenever you have a headache, remember that about Rexall aspirin. Ask for it at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember always, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role, with music composed and conducted by Frank Wirth. Look for Dick Powell in the Metro Golden Mayor production, Right Cross, in which he co stars with June Allison and Ricardo Montalban. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next week at this time when we will again present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hiya, beautiful. Get lost, Bristle Puss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids, like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll... Go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall Drugstores everywhere. Yes. To make girls care, go stag. <laughs>